Hello Booktube, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Today I'm going to discuss Robert Jordan's epic series, The Wheel of Time, and discuss the question whether or not you should read it. Um, firstly, this, this book series is long. It consists of 14 books that are all chunkers and then an additional prequel, a canon prequel to make it 15 books long. It's uh, 11,898 pages or 4,410,036 words long. To compare that to other works of literature that you might know, it is the equivalent of 125 and a quarter of Nella Larson's Passings. 51 and 3 quarters of Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure. It is 26 and a half times as long as last year's Booker Prize winner Shuggy Bain. Um, it is 13 and a half middle marches. That's right, middle march. This chunky novel, it's 13 and a half middle marches. And to compare it to the longest novel I've ever read, it's 8.1 Les Mises long. It is a huge novel. If you don't want to read this novel, if a novel, a series rather, if you don't want to read this series uh, and you want to audiobook it instead, and that's a valid choice because uh, it's heavy if nothing else, it's going to take you 19 days, 5 hours, and 25 continuous minutes to do that. Uh, 461 hours in total. There are 2,782 named characters and 147 different points of view in this series. Are you getting the picture? It's big, it's huge. So should you read this series? This series ultimately has something really simple working for it. It, it does what it says on the tin. It's, it is a series of epic fantasy and really if you're here watching this going should I read this book the question is do you think you'd like this book if you think you would like The Wheel of Time chances are you're going to love it if you think you're not going to like The Wheel of Time chances are you're gonna hate it it's it's that simple it it's not it, it's it's well advertised it's well marketed and you know whether you're gonna like it or not so just to do a, a brief like synopsis of what goes on in this novel. We have the Dark One and the Dark One is locked away in his prison and his prison is slowly weakening and his touch on the world is getting stronger and stronger. There is a prophecy that the Dragon Reborn will fight the Dark One at the final battle and his blood will be spilled on the rock and his sacrifice will save the world. And then we start in a farm village with these three boys, Matt, Perrin and Rand. And one of these boys is probably going to be the Dragon Reborn. And if they're not the Dragon Reborn, then it's a pretty silly book series because we're going to follow these characters for a long time and they're not going to end up saving the world. Um, joining these three boys is their young friend, Egwene, who is uh, two years younger than them, who sort of runs away with them on this epic adventure and becomes this kick-ass character. Uh, Moraine, who is an Aes Sedai, which is basically Robert Jordan's word for wizard. And Land, who is uh, a warder, which is essentially the bodyguard of a wizard with some kind of cool healing spirit link powers to the Aes Sedai. And they basically end up running away from Dark Friends and Trollocs. Trollocs are essentially the orcs of this world and Dark Friends are basically what they sound like. They are normal people who are bad. It then involves politics and multiple named characters and multiple kingdoms and it gets quite convoluted. Um, but that's the sort of series that you're getting yourself in for. There are a couple of things about Jordan's writing style which will really dictate whether you really like this book or, or not as well. Jordan repeats himself a lot. He loves to recap. It's like every, every book he's like previously on The Wheel of Time. Uh, and and he he never misses a chance to, to tell you about how Tyr is on the water and 
you know, about how the different coloured Arjas mean different things and how green sisters can take multiple men or whatever it is that he wants to tell. He'll repeat these things over and over and over again. Um, it It is a tactic for world building and it certainly means that when you need to know a piece of information, it's drilled into your head and it's there. Whether he needs to do it quite as much as he does is pretty much certain that he's doing it way too often. Um, the other thing that he does quite hard is foreshadow. I mean, if you want to know what's happening, what's going to happen, how this book is going to end, Jordan really does just tell you early on. And you could certainly turn on your brain and figure it all out if you wanted to. Except, it's not quite that simple because once you start to get a few of them right, Jordan then puts a few curveballs in. Jordan foreshadows hard, he foreshadows heavy, and he foreshadows a lot. And there are times when something will happen in book eight or nine of this novel that Jordan has foreshadowed in book one or two, and you're like, oh, well, that's the payoff from all that time ago, from those three and a half million words ago that I... I'm suddenly getting a payoff for now. And that will divide readers into either being quite a brilliant use of foreshadowing or quite a predictable use of foreshadowing. The ending of this is pretty predictable. Uh, and that's not to say that's a bad thing. It's still very entertaining, even though you know what's, what's happening. Um, one of the weird things about this world is Jordan's treatment of gender. Um, if you started this book in book one, you might say that it's incredibly male gazy, and it really kind of is. But also, book one only has male points of view, or sorry, book one predominantly has male points of view, and later books have female points of view, which we find that are still male gazy through female characters. But I, I definitely feel like Jordan is actually trying something with this world. He has a magic system that inherently places women above men in this world, that the power structure is completely changed to be uh, a female dominated power structure. In fact, the three most powerful kingdoms in this world, Sean Chan, Andor, and Tarvalon, are all matriarchal systems. They all hand the power down uh, to, to daughters uh, and queens and daughters. So that's interesting. And, and so while women are put into a position of lots of power, women are often put into the army and all that, we still have some ultimately really quite sexist attitudes coming across in this book with some really quite liberated attitudes. The idea that women will predominantly cook and clean is is definitely put forward quite a few times. Uh, and the, the main character has uh, a distaste for violence against women and killing women, which is seen as a weakness of his. And it is an interesting way of examining the topic of violence against women in a war. And ultimately, Jordan's gender politics really smacks of a man in the 90s who doesn't get it, who's trying to get it, and is exploring the ideas, but really just doesn't get it. And all this talk about gender completely ignores the fact that Robert Jordan was writing a story with very strong, independent, powerful women at a time when that was not really the norm, that that was just starting to be the norm. And it was it's good to see characters like Nynaeve and Gwaine grow in this book to be these powerful women and, and Elaine. And then, and, and also we've got characters like Moraine who are powerful women in their own right and more gays at the very start of this book, that the representation of women in these roles cannot be undermined at the time that he was writing it. And while it feels like it is a relatively recent novel, it's actually over 30 years old. 
Um, Robert Jordan was diagnosed with a terminal illness while he was writing this book series. Uh, and ultimately he passed away before he could complete the book series. And Brandon Sanderson was asked to uh, continue. At his time of passing, Jordan had written an outline for the entire rest of the series. But Brandon Sanderson did take over and write the final three books. And this terminal illness really does um, affect the series. I really feel that if I was diagnosed with a terminal illness, the idea of coming to terms with my own mortality and my own impending death would be incredibly hard to, to come to terms with. And I feel like we can see this in the writing of the middle novels in, in this series where Jordan doesn't really progress the storyline a hell of a lot and and we're we're left with these slow boring books and then when Jordan finally does pass away Brandon Sanderson takes over and the books immediately pick back up and this has led to a lot of people to say that Sanderson is the superior writer which is a point of view that I think I completely disagree with there is a nuance to Jordan's work that Sanderson simply does not have um, Sanderson is is writing a plot driven novel and he is writing it well but there are bits that if if I'm there are bits that he just either willfully misunderstood or just doesn't get, or, or maybe I got it completely wrong. But he, the thing is with Jordan, when he, you know, this world is very PG-13 in, in a lot of places. Jordan wants to have representation without ruffling the feathers is, is the feeling I get. We have a transgendered character in here in that, one of the people is reborn as the opposite sex. We have this thing called a pillow friend, which I've, I've discussed with other people, and it really does seem like that this is a, this is an LGBT relationship. This is what you call your, your partner if you are gay or lesbian. And Sanderson completely rewrites this as something that is minimized and if I'm nice about it I can just say that he didn't get it and he took the simple interpretation that was there that Jordan put in there he put in you know and 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 ignored the subtext but I kind of don't feel like a professional writer would have that and I'll have to take the cynical point of view that Jordan's a that 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 Sanderson probably is a homophobe and wanted to erase that from the novels uh with his treatment of and then completely rewriting the meaning um or or rather explicitly stating the meaning because one of the talents of an author is to know when to not say something and Jordan was much better at not saying stuff and leaving the interpretation open and Sanderson doesn't do that. Um, the other main difference between Sanderson and Jordan is a completely simple writing difference is that Jordan was much happier to stick with the narrative of a character over multiple chapters um, and Sanderson switched now, as the books progressed, Jordan was much more likely to switch narrators. Um, but Sanderson is at some point switching every sentence between two different characters. And that scene works. Uh, the ultimately the swapping is is quite a different point of view. And, and that's it kind of indicative of just how much quicker Sanderson's writing is. And, and as far as progressing the plot, Sanderson does that quite well. But even the pace that we're going at with Jordan, when we know that there's three books left and we look at what's going to happen, well, I, I couldn't see how it got finished in three. And then when there was one book left, I was like, even with the pace Sanderson's going at, I can't see how it got finished in one. And then it did. And I was like, oh, it doesn't feel... It just It just felt a little bit quick and then there was that one relationship at the end 
that didn't make any sense. And you wonder whether Jordan wrote that relationship or Sanderson wrote that relationship. And if Jordan wrote that relationship, did Sanderson do a bad job of making me believe that? Sanderson on the like resolving the plot and doing everything that Robert Jordan wasn't doing because he was not coping with his own impending death in the last books. Yeah, he rocked at that. So very different authors in the end. And, and as a story that grips you, it, it totally does that. And, and it's a complete success. Does it need to be 14 and a half novels long? Absolutely not. Could it have been cut down and, and condensed? It certainly could have been. Would that have made it better? Yes, it would have. That's my review of The Wheel of Time. Have you read this uh, epic series? Did you DNF this series at a particular point? I'd love to know where you DNF'd it if you did. Um, is this a series you've been thinking about picking up? Let me know in the comments. Um, if you're new here, whack that subscribe button, ring that bell, and have a nice day. Bye.